Hi there everyone, I am beyond excited to be able to make this video for you today. This video marks the official launch of the brand new AOS V5 series of frames featuring the patent pending AOS XL vibration isolation technology. In this video, I'm gonna be covering the three new AOS V5 frames launching today, the AOS 5, the AOS 5R, and the AOS 3.5 version 5. I'm gonna start by giving you a bit of background on the design philosophy behind these frames before diving in and we're gonna look at the key features of these new frames on the bench, including some build suggestions that I have for you in case you're looking to build out one of these frames in the near future. After that, I'm gonna be taking you through a detailed resonance analysis of the new AOS XL technology so you can see exactly what makes it work. And of course, we're gonna be looking at some flight footage as well. After all of that, I'm gonna be talking about the next round of V5 releases and what this means for AOS frames in 2024. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Before we dive into looking at these frames in detail on the bench, I wanted to take a moment to give you some background on the design philosophy behind the new V5 series so that you can put these frames into context and know where I'm coming from with each element of the design. I've been able to condense the design approach down into three core concepts. The first is to use AOS XL to really leverage that technology to level up the flight performance of the frame. AOS frames have always been about flight performance first and foremost, and the V5 series is no different. You'll find XL in the DNA of all of these frames, and that's what's gonna allow you to run less filtering and higher PID gains for better prop wash handling, a more locked stick feel, and smoother footage to give a better overall FPV experience. The second is to find a balance between weight and durability. It's easy to make a durable frame that's far too heavy or a lightweight frame that's far too fragile. The V5 series takes the middle ground to be the most durable frame in each weight class. And if you have a target weight in mind, CNC drones are offering customizable arm and plate thicknesses for the V5 frames to help you hit it. And finally, I wanted these frames to be simple to build and a joy to work on, no matter what gear you're using. So you'll find loads of space for all your electronics, metal press nuts to reinforce the arm and stack screws, versatile camera mounting, and access to every single mounting screw in your build without disassembling the frame. And now, without any further ado, let's head on over to the bench. If any comments or questions spring to mind as we go through these frames on the bench, please leave them down below. And if you're looking for more information on specs or you'd like to try the frames out for yourself, there are links down in the video description. All right, so let's take a look at the AOS 5 V5 on the bench, starting with the frame geometry. We've got a squished X motor layout supporting up to 5.3 inch props. And we have four identical symmetric arms that come into the middle of the frame. The frame itself is a long body design that moves the FPV camera forward so you have no props in view with the O3 camera on its widest possible settings, even when you're using 5.3 inch props. Now, there are two approaches to getting no props in view with a five inch quad these days. You can either have a dead cat design or a long body. A dead cat design has a problem, which is that the center of mass moves forward of the center of thrust and that can lead to wobbles and bobbles on pitch during full throttle punch outs because your center of mass and center of thrust aren't aligned. With a long body design, you can have the center of mass absolutely in the middle of the frame and exactly coincident with the center of thrust so that when you do your full throttle punch outs, everything stays nice and steady. So that's the reason that I went for a long body. It's purely for flight performance. One thing to note if you're building this frame out with a digital FPV camera is you are going to need a 200 millimeter camera cable um, to stretch from the rear VTX mounting to the camera because of that slightly longer body. All right, now that we've looked at the geometry, I want to run you through the features on this top plate. Starting up front with the GoPro mounting. This is a 29 by 29 millimeter M3 GoPro mounting, and we have press nuts installed in the top plate so you can screw the GoPro mount straight down into those press nuts and down into the aluminum camera cage to secure your GoPro really tightly to the top plate. These cutouts here are for an XT60 panel mount connector. Either an M2.5 or M3 panel mount connector will fit. Moving backwards, we have captive battery strap slots, four of them, two in the center and two at the rear. And then the two here are for toilet tank battery mounting. So if you wanna mount your battery in the toilet tank style to minimize the moment of inertia on the pitch axis, you can do that easily using those final two slots. The top plate comes off with just these eight screws and the rear six are countersunk so they don't interfere with your battery mounting. Let's take the top plate off now and have a look at the electronics inside. Now that I've taken the top plate off, you can see the electronics mounting, but I've got this plate here to make it even clearer. 
In the front and the rear, we have 30 by 30, 25 by 25, and 20 by 20 M2 mounting. And in the center on the AOS XL, we have 30 by 30 and 20 by 20 M3 mounting for the flight control stack. All of the arm screws and the stack screws are reinforced with press nuts to make assembly really easy and to minimize the risk that you'll ever strip out a standoff when you're assembling the arm screws. The AOS 5 V5 is designed to be super easy to build. And there are a couple of features that contribute to that that I want to call your attention to. The first is this camera cage. You can see that we've taken the top plate off now, but this camera cage is still securely mounted with four screws to the bottom plate. So it's not going anywhere. And the camera up tilt isn't going to change while you make any adjustments you need to to your electronics. The second feature, if we flip the frame over, are the slots in this brace plate, which give you complete access to every stack screw including the ability to actually fully remove and replace stack screws if you need to without having to dismantle any part of the bottom of the frame. The next thing I want to show you is this custom 7000 series aluminium camera cage and it's designed to be super durable and super versatile not just for all the FPV cameras that we use today but also for any new cameras that might be cooked up in the future. You can see it's got these removable and replaceable carbon fiber panels for the camera mounting. And there are a few different options provided with the frame kit. The first is this soft mount panel. This can be used with either a silicon gummy or a TPU gummy for soft mounting the O3 camera or for the Walksnail FPV cameras. And then there's this second carbon fiber panel provided which stacks on top of the first and that provides a hard mounting for standard 19 millimeter FPV cameras. The camera cage provides full ND filter support for the DJI O3 system, and both sides of the camera cage are identical, so you don't need to worry about whether there's a left or right-handed version, they're both exactly the same. CNC drones are also providing this camera cage in a range of fancy colors as well. Before we move on, I want to give you my thoughts on the overall build. And starting with the props, the Gemfan 5226 and 5236 props perform amazingly well on the thrust test stand, but they're 5.3 inch props, which means that they're too big to fit on most normal 5 inch frames. But they will fit on this frame because I've designed them to fit and they are outstanding in terms of efficiency and top end power, especially when you pair them with a capable motor like the AOS Supernova 2207. I would definitely recommend you give these props a try and the AOS 5 V5 is one of few frames that will fit them. In terms of the stack, I've been favoring 20 by 20 racing stacks recently because if you get a 50 or a 60 amp rated M3 20x20 20 20 racing stack, it provides heaps of power for this type of build, and it's smaller, more compact, and lighter weight, so I tend to favor them. So that's the rundown of the AOS 5 V5. If you're interested in the full specs, there are links to AOSRC.com down in the video description. Now let's take a look at the AOS 5R. Looking now at the AOS 5R V5, and this is the 5 inch racing frame in the V5 series. Geometry wise, we have a true X geometry, again with support for up to 5.3 inch props. On the top plate, we have a 25 by 25 and 20 by 20 M2 mounting for a VTX, and also some slots cut for mounting a receiver. All the 3D prints that you see here, the shark fin, the antenna and receiver mount, and the arm guards are all available on AOSRC.com, the link's down in the video description. In terms of the electronics mounting, I've got again a base plate to show you how everything is mounted in this frame. We've got press nut reinforcement for all the arm screws. You can see the arms interlock at the front and at the rear. And we also have the four M3 press nuts here for the stack screws with the AOS XL cutouts. The main advantage of AOS XL on a racing frame like this is simplicity. There's no need for any stiffener plates or anti-wiggle plates or anything in here to give the frame exceptional vibration performance. AOS XL takes care of everything, which means that this frame has just seven carbon parts and is super simple to build and maintain. One of the ease of use features of this frame is that the standoff spacing front to rear is 55 millimeters, which is a little bit longer than on typical racing frames of this type of weight. That gives you a little bit more space inside for fitting these really large racing orientated ESCs. Some of the largest 20 by 20 ESCs really barely fit in a frame with 50 millimeter standoff spacing. And people have reported that in crashes, the standoffs move and damage the ESC. So there's just a little bit more clearance in this frame to fit those really large ESCs. And that's quite well demonstrated by this race ESC from iFlight with full-size FETs. 
If we flip the frame over, you can see that we have two captive battery strap slots here and also access to all the stack screws. So again, you can completely replace the whole stack in this frame, take the screws out, and my hope is that will save pilots a lot of time on race day. The standard version of the AOS 5RV5 has six millimeter thick arms and weighs 60 grams. But if you wanna go lighter than that, CNC drones will sell a five millimeter arm version and that weighs in at just 50 grams. The final frame I've got to show you is the AOS 3.5 V5. Let's take a look. The AOS 3.5 V5 shares many of the same features as the AOS 5 that we looked at earlier. We have the same squished X motor geometry supporting up to 3.5 inch props, four symmetric arms coming into the middle of the frame, and the camera cage far enough forward to ensure no props in view, no matter what settings you're running on your O3 camera or what props you choose. In terms of the top plate, many of the same features. We have a GoPro mounting pattern, 29 millimeters by 18 millimeters, with M2 press nuts to secure a naked GoPro or a Cadex peanut down to the top plate. And we have a cutout here for a panel mount connector or for a 3D print to hold an XT30. Captive battery strap slots in the top plate for both the conventional battery mounting and also toilet tank position. And then moving back, there are these extra slots here which can be used to hold a thin battery strap if you want a second strap with the battery moved a bit further back. Eight screws to attach the top plate with the rear six countersunk so they don't interfere with the battery. Let's take the top plate off and have a look at the electronics mounting inside. Now that the top plate's off, you can see that we have a different electronics mounting configuration in this frame compared to the AOS 5. I have the flight controller mounted up front with the VTX behind. I've got this little test piece to show you the cutouts on the bottom plate. In the middle is the AOS XL, you can see that clearly. And of course you could choose to mount your flight controller in the middle of the frame here on either the 25 by 25 or the 20 by 20 M2 mounting. Alternatively, you can mount the flight controller in the front on 25 by 25 or 20 by 20, or in the rear 25 by 25 or 20 by 20. And no matter where you mount your electronics, you always get the benefit of the XL technology in this frame because the flight controller is always separated from the main source of vibration, which is the root of the arm. For ease of build, we've got press nut reinforcement for the arm mounting screws. And again, the benefit of the aluminum camera cage, which stays completely rigid even once you've taken the top plate off, so nothing moves as you adjust the electronics inside. Flipping the frame over, again, we have these X slots cut into the bottom plate so that you can get full access to all of the mounting screws without having to disassemble any of the bottom part of the frame. The camera cage on the AOS 3.5 is a little thinner and lighter than the cage on the AOS 5 with M2 mounting hardware rather than M3. But apart from that, it supports all of the same camera mounting features, soft and hard mounts for all common FPV cameras, and ND filters for the O3 system as well. Hopefully that's covered all of the key features of these frames, and there are links down in the video description to the full specs if you need more detail. Now that you've seen how AOS XL is implemented in all of these frames, let's take a look at a resonance analysis to see exactly how the technology isolates vibrations from the flight controller. For most quadcopters, it's the first few resonant modes that are the most problematic and that need to be actively managed. I've done a resonance analysis to show you the first three modes of vibration of the AOS 5 V5 so that you can see how the motors move on the ends of the arms. It's clear just from looking at these three modes that primarily it's the motors moving on the ends of the arms, that's the main source of vibration, and then that vibration is transmitted along the arm down into the body of the drone. If we hide all the other parts and just focus in on the base plate of the drone where the flight control stack is mounted, you can see that the movement of this first mode of vibration causes the base plate to bend and twist, and that's gonna transmit vibration from the ends of the arms up into the flight control stack. With AOS XL, the flight control stack is separated from the ends of the arms, and so that vibration isn't being transmitted into the stack screws and then up into the flight controller. The flight control stack remains rigid on top of the XL, separated from any movements of the frame, and that gives you a very clean gyro signal. Unlike with soft mounting the whole flight control stack, the stack isn't free to move in this configuration. You can see that it's still rigidly connected to the frame at four points, so the stack is still gonna follow the bulk movement of the drone, so the rigid body rotations of the drone are gonna be followed really, really accurately. It's just the vibrations that are being isolated out. 
With configurations like the AOS 3.5, where you're mounting the flight controller half on and half off the XL, you still see a benefit of vibration isolation just by keeping the mountings for the flight controller that are closest to the root of the arms well isolated. So you're still going to get a benefit from the technology even if you're mounting the flight controller half on and half off. It doesn't have to be entirely mounted on the XL to see the benefit. So the AOS XL technology works great in theory, in simulation. But that doesn't mean very much unless it works in practice. So we're going to take a look at some black box logs now and see how the AOS 5 V5 stacks up. And I'm not going to make the comparison easy either. Identical builds head to head against the AOS 5 EVO. And the EVO is no slouch when it comes to resonance performance. The topology optimized arms embarrass just about every other FPV frame out there. So the AOS 5 V5 has got its work cut out for it. So here's the side by side. Same motors, same props, same pilot, logs trimmed to the same length, and identical X, Y, and luminosity axes. On the right, we have the AOS 5 EVO, nice quiet zone all the way up to the first resonant mode, and then this bright area here where the vibrational energy is being transmitted from the movement of the arms through into the flight controller. If we come over to the AOS 5 V5, same quiet zone up to the first resonant mode, and then you just get this sort of small smudge here, and there's not much to see. This is the practical benefit of Excel. It achieves about a 50% reduction in the vibrations transmitted to the flight controller. And this is why the AOS 5 V5 doesn't have a truss structure for the arms anymore. It doesn't add very much with XL doing all of the heavy lifting now. And it's better to remove that structure, save the weight and avoid blocking the thrust column from the prop. Before I leave you with some flight footage, there's just one last thing to talk about. And that's what's next. I plan to refresh all of my AOS frames with XL technology over the next few quarters and you'll be able to recognize them because they'll all be version 5, like the AOS 5 V5. I'm going to be releasing the frames in batches a few at a time, and I don't have firm deadlines for when each release is going to be, but I can tell you the next release is the AOS 4, the AOS T3, and the AOS 7. Then we've got the UL5, UL7, and UL10, and then the Cine 25, 35, and 80. Those are the batches I'm going to be working in. If you want to stay up to date with every release, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And if you want early access and to learn stuff before anyone else, then consider joining my Patreon. And there are links to that down in the video description. Along with the frame launches, I am planning to prepare some more aggressive presets for the V5 series for beta flight once the weather here improves and I can get out flying a bit more. And there are some new 3D prints for the arm guards and GoPro mount. All the other prints should fit from previous versions of the frame because the standoff size and spacing hasn't changed. Everything you need, you can find on AOSRC.com.